So, my dear people of God, let me first of all thank Bishop Francis Kofi Anani Lodunu for this honor he has done to me for asking me to preach his anniversary. Personally, I was expecting my Lord Bishop to tell us at this gathering his experiences maybe 50 years down the lane. But this is not the case. And he knows that I, Quaquasian, don't know him much. Well, maybe he doesn't want to preach about himself. Neither does he want anyone to preach him. Bishop Kofi Anani Lodon. So, my Lord Bishop, in this case, I will try <laughs> to preach Christ, not you. Actually, my close contact with Bishop Lodon was when I was elected Bishop of Yosu in December 1999. I was then a military chaplain in Burma Camp, Accra. Bishop Lodon was the bishop who immediately invited me for a lunch at a restaurant around Osu in Accra. At the lunch, he spoke to me at length with encouraging words which instilled confidence in me. As if he knew what I would encounter as a bishop in no time. I was ordained on the 25th of March 2000 in Yosu. Then, in May 2001, it came out that the bishop's residence, which was supposed to be a gift to the bishop from a church member, was a hoax. That it was a deceit. The residence was used to get the diocese. So, I brought the issue to the bishop's conference in Accra, SES, in the same week. All the bishops were taken aback when they heard of us. Because those who were at the celebration saw how somebody was brought in front and applauded for donating a uh, residence to the uh, bishop. So the bishops tagged then Archbishop Peter Texton, the provincial head of Cape Coast province, and 
Bishop John Martin Darkum of blessed memory, then the Bishop of Sekendita Kradi, to go to you also for facts finding and possible resolution of whatever the issue was. Then at the recess of our meeting, Bishop Lodonu called me aside. He sat me down and said, Hey, look here. Are you afraid? <laughs> Are you afraid? Don't worry. Don't worry. You have been made a bishop. You will build a house of your choice. Well, I thanked him and we continued with our meeting. How was the issue resolved? We are in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. It was resolved. So let's put that aside. But it is a fact that by the year 2002, I had built a house of my choice. <laughs> and moved into it to the greater glory of the Lord. My Lord Bishop, I thank you sincerely for all what you did to contribute to make me what I am now. Thank you. I am now six months old Emeritus Bishop of yours. down the lane, Bishop Lodono not just preached the word and administered the sacrament, not just counseled and gave encouragements, but made several people what they are. Bishop has formed several priests, made religious men and women what they are. He has brought uncountable married couples to the Lord. He has made proud teachers, proud nurses, proud medical doctors, and even politicians, he has brought them to where they are. All as part of ministry, the ministry of holistic development of the person. He has not just preached. He has acted just like Christ, supporting his words with deeds. His contributions to the hierarchy of the church in Ghana cannot be counted. So, coupled with all the ups and downs in his life, He can therefore say with St. Paul in what we heard in the second scripture reading, 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. My life is already being poured as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. 
I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. To my dear archbishops and bishops, our brother is asking me to tell you that we should continue to be one. We should not relent to face the evils in our society from a common front. Our people rely strongly on us and we should never, never disappoint them. In fact, we can't face the evils in our society presently with any fragmented and permeable frontage as a conference. May they be one, just as the Father and I are one. That was Jesus' prayer to the apostles. And to my brother priests and religious, Bishop wants me to tell you that you will receive the freely and you are to give freely. He says the temptation for some of you to seek for material rewards is becoming greater and greater. You are to look to the apostles, especially the apostle Paul, he never charged anything for his preaching or for his services. See what he tells us in 2 Corinthians 11, 7 and following. We are more and more serious on something like backyard gardening. To have some vegetables for yourselves. And even cocoa, huh? For you, should cocoa didn't come through the uh, offer tree. Isn't it time for you to make use? It is. Especially now that you and I know that up there, there's no mass type and, huh? which is coming. He says, I should tell you. <laughs> we know, St. Paul, we are told, stood low huh, to use the hands to weave baskets. Uh -huh. So, let's get down and use our hands also. I don't say make it eh, your full-time job to the detriment of your priesthood. No. That's what, what Bishop is saying. To my brothers and sisters, youth of the day, Bishop is telling me to tell you that there is no shortcut to success. Repeat, there is no shortcut to success. Neither there is anybody like Archimedes or Isaac Newton or James. Then Jesus persisted. Yes, some say, some say, some say, some say. But you, 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 you. 
if he were to mention names, sir, I'm sure Jesus would say, You prosper. You wisdom. You, Madam Afi. You, Madam Akoshua. Jesus would have said, You, you, Madam Akoshua, what do you say? Who do you say that I am? Jesus was looking for, I say. Wasn't looking for, they say, or we say. He was looking for, I believe, not we believe. We've seen the change now. So stop saying, in the Catholic Church, we receive communion. In the Catholic Church, we receive communion. Why don't you say, in my Catholic Church, I, I, I receive communion. In my church, I receive communion. It's just unfortunate. I'm saying it's unfortunate that many of you have, uh, you know, clothed yourselves with societal clothes and t-shirts, huh? but you are hiding from Jesus, the Lord and Savior. You discuss him. You sing him. You dance him. But unfortunately, you don't know him. So Bishop is telling me to tell you that come out of the cloak and know who Jesus is. Possibly strive to avail yourself for him to live in you so that you also live in him. Because that's what he tells us in John 6. Start reading from 35. 51 to 53, he tells us, whoever eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life. Whoever eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me and I in him. That wasn't said by any cardinal or archbishop or bishop. It was said by the Lord himself. So, Bishop wished that 50 years eh, down the line at communion, at least, at least 50% of us will be here. But if you like, eh, challenge, at best, we'll get only 30% of us to come for the communion. So how can Jesus live in us for us also to live in him? That is the challenge he's throwing to us, the faithful. Looking at you, you are very, very beautiful. There is no, no challenge about that. But we have to know Jesus and who he is. I know Jesus. I live Jesus. I receive Jesus. I live in him and he lives in me. Not in our church we receive communion. Uh -uh. Baba, while you are still waiting for your crown of righteousness, can I remind you not to be too anxious? Because the Lord says, after doing all this, just tell yourself that you are unprofitable servant. You have done what was your duty. Luke 17, 10. You have done what was your duty. May he continue to bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he give you lasting peace and joy.
Thank you.